yay let's look at um dynamics then right so i'm going to reset my layout standard file and new and let's have a look at some dynamics so we've just keyframed a bouncy ball uh, which is all very well and good. What about if we wanted to have a more organic look that doesn't involve me having to keyframe anything? Well, we can do that with dynamics. I'm going to create, funnily enough, a sphere. This will be my bouncy ball again. I'm just gonna move it up. Probably going to move it up a lot, so I'm gonna need to come out of here. And I'm also going to create a floor object. And I'm gonna show you why I create a floor object in a minute. So rather than a plane, I'm creating one of the infinite floor objects, which is this one, boom. So I now have an infinite floor. Yes, it doesn't look like it's infinite, but it is when you render. But for this example, it doesn't matter. Okay. With my sphere selected, I'm going to go to tags, simulation, and I'm going to add a rigid body tag. What that does is add a tag to my sphere that says, funnily enough, the surface of this sphere has a rigid body. The dynamics then take into, for, uh, into account all sorts of other things like collisions, masses, forces, what's going on in the world. Soft body will ignore for the moment, caching will come back to. But it means that basically the upshot of with, if I press play, it'll start to fall. Ah, it's fallen straight through my floor. The reason for that is, the floor is not being told to be dynamic in any way, shape or form. So we need to add a different type of tag to the floor. I'm gonna to go to tags, simulation tags, collider body, funnily enough, because this is what it will collide with. Click my collider body, you can see I've now got these two different tags. And now if I press play, dump, it sort of sits there. It doesn't bounce very well but we can control that and change that in a bit. The reason why I wanted to create a floor is because I'm gonna show you something that's a real neat trick. So I've deleted the two tags. If you select the sphere and the floor, right click on the sphere simulation and add a rigid body tag to the sphere, the collider body makes itself. Um, I'm easily pleased, but it means that there's a few less clicks I have to worry about. And it means that I can press play and the sphere sort of gently falls to the ground. Is this just what if, is this just the trick with the floor? That's just the trick with the floor. Yeah, it doesn't do it with any other object, I'm afraid. It will if you have more than one object selected, it will make a rigid body. Only with the floor will it make a collider. Cool. But if you just want to set up some dynamics for some fun, it's an easy way of doing it. With our tags, we have some functions. So if I look at my collision factor for my sphere, I've got some interesting information. Most of this I think I can ignore for the moment so that I don't need to go into it in too much detail. But collision is the appropriate one because I've got some bounce and some friction. So my bounce is set to only 5%. So let's set that to 50 and see what it does. Absolutely nothing, that's perfect. Let's try adding that to the floor as well. There we go. You have the ability of tweaking different settings depending on which one of these you have selected. So let's whack that up a bit more on the bounce on the floor. Let's make it 100%. There we go, bouncy ball. It's a little bit flat, isn't it? Let's see if I can lower the friction. There we go just looks a bit better. But it's a really quick way of adding more realism um, and worrying less about having to keyframe this ball doing exactly what you want it to do. Let's select both of those. Let's make it 100% bouncy and 0% friction. Whee, that's better. Um, let's whack my animation up more than 90 frames. So let's make that 500 just so I can press play and watch it bounce up and down ad infinitum. Um, you may notice that I now can't scrub backwards, but if I keep moving forwards, it keeps animating. 
This is because a dynamics is a simulation. This means Cinema 4D is calculating it as we go right now. It doesn't understand it as something that can play backwards. I can go to frame zero and I can go there, but if I go backwards and keep going forwards, it just keeps doing it. It won't reverse um, until you cache it. So you may have heard the mm, uh, phrase baking uh, when it comes to 3D, and that basically means kind of solidifying simulations or dynamics um, as keyframes in the background. It basically makes a cache. So let's select my cache, and then I can bake all. And what it will do, Cinema 4D will figure out the dynamics in the background and make a database file that you don't really need to worry about. But it means that I can now scrub through my animation. Oh, I should be able to scrub through my animation. I didn't do it. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. Let's clear all caches. Let's just bake the sphere instead. There we go. Oh, it's because I had the floor in there as well. I didn't need the floor because the floor didn't do anything. Um, so there we go. We can just add the bouncy ball, but it means that I can scrub through. If I made any changes to this sphere, for example, like its size, and I scrub through, you will see that it intersects with the floor. This is because the keyframes in the background are still cached. They haven't been overwritten by the fact that I've changed my sphere size. So I would need to clear my caches and rebake the object. And now when I did it, you can see it's like a big heavy ball thudding to the ground. So let's try a much smaller ball, rebake. Oops, let's clear all and bake object. There we go. There we go. And I can scrub through it. And off it goes, bouncing happily all by itself. OK, that in theory is pretty much the information that you need when you deal with objects like this. 